Hey, hey everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a typical ride. It's a roller coaster in crypto. It is very typical uh, when you take a look at the headlines, the noise can be a little confusing. So what I wanna do is give you a hint on how I take that news in, in this space, and I try to turn it into smart or smarter investing. And I'm gonna share couple of headlines today and where that can lead you. The first thing I do every morning when I wake up is I check the Bitcoin price. Why? Because the market movement and price action is heavily tied to the Bitcoin sentiment. Today, the price move it, movement has been really not doing a whole lot of anything for Bitcoin. It is just modestly up about 1%. It is trying to hang on to 57,000 and the altcoins are on the sidelines taking a little bit of a breather because there has been uh, more money moving into bitcoin and the retreating of prices anywhere from 5 to 10% on average for alts is really tied to no real reason except there were some strong prices in the last few weeks and i think there's a bit of profit taking going and then when the profit taking happens sometimes that can accelerate a lot of sell pressure and it does what it does it takes that breather in and out that's just how the market works i think a couple of weeks ago i think about 10 days ago exactly i had sensed that we were really at a price to possibly consider some profit or at least taking some off the table and i actually got a couple of pushback comments like shame on me for saying that no actually not shame on me i have been in this space for more than three years and you really do need to always take a little bit of profit when prices are high that's how you work this market now some people say i don't want to trade i'm just a hodler that's fine that's just fine that's totally perfectly fine just be aware that the time frames for when the market breathes just can be longer than you expect all right so let's just go through some of these headlines this is funny jamie diamond he's the ceo of jp morgan the fifth largest bank in the world in terms of total assets uh, he's the leader of financial services that are really um, the envy of many in the world. And his comments on Bitcoin, I have to tell you, always entertain me. This is the one in the last 24 hours. They topping 57,000 for the first time since May. It's now just about 11% away from its all-time high, but not everyone is convinced by this breakout. Listen to what JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said about Bitcoin earlier today. I personally think that Bitcoin is worthless, but I don't want to be a spokesman. But I don't care. It makes no difference to me. I don't think you should smoke cigarettes either. <laughs> and then on the total opposite side of the spectrum is Kevin O'Leary. He once had a narrative that was very similar to Jamie Dimon, but he has flipped his thinking. And I want to thank DJ Peter Voss for sending me this. This is good too. So this will tell you, oh my gosh, look at the, look at the, Look at the diversity in comments that you get in the news on just a 24-hour period. Here you go. Crypto is not going away. That's not going to happen. We are so early into crypto. I think the potential of this sector is trillions of dollars. It is already a couple of trillion, and there are a lot more trillions to go. And then I want you to meet Lisa Monaco. She will have you going in a completely different direction. She's the new crypto cop, once with the FBI and also working under Bush and Obama. Uh, her narrative here as the new deputy attorney general, she's going to have you spit shining your shoes in a matter of two minutes. Here you go, listen to this. Be able to announce uh, a few new initiatives uh, that we are launching as a result of this review. The first is we are launching today the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team. Now, we've already made great strides in combating misuse of cryptocurrency platforms, and we've shown we won't hesitate to go after those platforms that help criminals launder or hide 
their uh, criminal proceeds. We've done this in August when we went after uh, the Darknet Bitcoin mixer, where we went after the Helix money laundering service. So we've got points on the board when it comes to, uh, to this issue, but we want to strengthen our capacity to dismantle financial the financial ecosystem that enables uh, these criminal actors to flourish, quite frankly, and to profit um, from what they're doing. And we're going to do that by drawing on our cyber experts and cyber prosecutors, our money laundering experts. Um, and when you think about this, you know, we need to centralize and build on the expertise that we already have. And the analogy I would make, Garrett, so people can understand this is this, uh, kind of stepping back, when you think about it, we have been enforcing the securities laws for decades. Uh, we police fraud on the markets with insider trading uh, cases or market manipulation investigations. And the point, of course, is to protect consumers uh, and to make sure we can all have confidence in the markets that we're engaging in. And the same has got to be true as the technology uh, advances. So we need to evolve with it. Crypto uh, currency exchanges want to be the, the banks of the future. Well, we need to make sure that folks can have confidence uh, when they're using these systems. And we need to make sure we're poised to root out abuse that can take hold on them. So the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team is something we're launching today. Woo! <laughs> All right, so if you can get through those kinds of uh, narratives every day and you still want to be in this space, well, then let me tell you how I approach these headlines. So today, RippleNet and NowNet announced that they have a $44 million clean energy fund for a cleaner and more stable energy in the future. And this is because the adoption of cryptocurrencies are growing and they want to reduce the carbon footprint of the financial services globally. I think it's great, but you might think to yourself, oh, this doesn't really pertain to me, but I'm gonna show you, it just might. So the funny part about this in a little bit of humor is that no doubt uh, when you think about the miners in Bitcoin that are going to have to move their hash power to migrate uh, with the uh, certifiable ESG solutions, no doubt that's going to come with a required compliance in global financial services in the future. The miners will be using and depending on ripple led solar farms <laughs> And the Maxis are still going to call Ripple a scam, no doubt, right? <laughs> it's funny. Well, all right, so let's get serious. How can you make money from these solar panels? Well, according to this particular uh, article, silver can be used up to 6% of the total cost of building each unit of a solar panel and the average panel of approximately one square meter, which is about 10 square, 10 square feet, you can um, use up to 20 grams of silver in that process for just that one panel. And as of 2018, and we know that solar, solar panel manufacturing has increased quite a bit since 2018, the solar panel manufacturing industry used about 8% of the world's annual physical silver supply. So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, okay, maybe I should look a little harder at silver. Here's another headline today. So this is uh, uh, SBI. SBI is the largest outside shareholder of Ripple. They are a huge blockchain and digital asset investor, and they made an investment in Africa with a major private equity firm in Nigeria. They're going to target these young people who are returning back to their homeland in Africa after starting a business um, when they finish school at Harvard and Stanford, which so many of them do. Talk about a targeted focus. That is just incredible. So especially those that are returning and developing this next generation of technology. You see, SBI has made three other investments in Africa that didn't even make the headlines. And two of them went into Cuda Bank. Cuda Bank uh, had the latest round of 55 million just on August 2nd. It didn't even make the headlines. Cuda Bank is one of those digital banks that are going to grow in what sectors? Payments and DeFi, of course. And SBI with RippleNet and XRP with Mr. Kitao having his rails now into a bank like this throughout Africa. Of course, it makes sense. That's why I am such a big uh, 
um, XRP fan, you can see ahead of where the development and growth is going to be. But remember, let's go a little bit beyond the obvious, all right? The African crypto ecosystem, this is impressive. It is the largest and fastest growing in the world. There is a digital revolution happening. It's young and it's tech savvy. 60% of the continent is under 25. Nigeria was the first to really adopt cryptocurrency, followed by South Africa and Ghana. Kenya now has the highest ownership. And if you take a look at the NFT projects, it is just exploding, exploding. So the World Economic Forum has reported that the crypto market has grown by about 105 billion dollars in the last year in Africa. It's the next frontier, as they write. And if you look, Bitcoin transacted here in the orange compared to alts on the other countries. It's astonishing. So I'm not talking about anything that if you're just purely going to look at where the growth is, what is being adopted, what asset you want to invest in, I'm just saying you cannot disregard Bitcoin. You have to consider it. Bitcoin is on top, has the highest adoption rate globally. And as this Forbes article cites, Africa has the highest Bitcoin adoption rate. So how do you make money? Well, you don't turn your nose up to Bitcoin for one, all right? Secondly, Five out of seven of the unicorns in Africa come from fintech. And you can see the five up here, Wave, Opay, and then the next two are Ripple Partners, Flutter Wave, and Fowry. And then that Interswitch is the new, new uh, company that partnered on the Stellar platform. And Flutter Wave is looking to IPO in the U.S., so again, this is, if you don't wanna wait for the IPO, I saw that uh, Zen Equity has the pre-IPO shares available as private equity. If you don't qualify for that, my point is you want to really just get the bigger picture. You want to see the businesses that touch the crypto boom to diversify your exposure. So you can give me any headline and I think I can give you at least three connections of something that is going to be impact, impacted by that uh, new exploding market. So all of you now should be thinking to yourself, you should be researching what are the second most and the third most popular crypto assets that are traded in Africa. That is how you do it. This is how you handle this space. Don't let the timing slip through your hands. This is super exciting and I'm going to jump to the fluff. This is Peach. Peach is the discount airline in Japan and uh, they have something that's really fun. Uh, they're always thinking outside the box. Uh, they'll take you up to Hokkaido to watch the uh, drift ice come down from Siberia. That's one of the popular trips that they plan in the wintertime. Also, uh, amazing horsehair crab that comes uh, in just bundles and bundles for an amazing price is another reason why people head up that way. But take a look at this. This is part of the gachapon culture. This is a capsule vending machine that's everywhere in Japan. I'm telling you, I can walk 25, 50, 100 steps, and I can point to a gachapon machine in my neighborhood. And it is uh, just, just part of the Japanese culture. This one, though, is quite different. Inside these pink balls is a round trip airplane ticket on Peach. To where? Well, that's the fun. You don't know. There are 12 possibilities. <laughs> Even three of those destinations are in the islands down in Okinawa. <laughs> this is great, right? Just 46 US dollars 
open your gachapon up and you'll be going somewhere in Japan. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.